Saitama, All right. the One Punch Man. Popeye, the Sailor Man. East versus West. Old versus new. Healthy eating versus basic exercise. <laughs> These two warriors Healthy may eating, seem basic ridiculous, exercise. That's but their right. unassuming exteriors belie impossible strength. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death I feel battle. like this isn't going to go the way that I think it should. <laughs> Life is pain. Brutal and short. The challenges we face during our brief sojourn on this tiny blue marble are what make us human. They light a fire in our soul. They make it all worth something. Without them, we are lost. Yeah, it's a little early in the day for an existential crisis, <laughs> but luckily I came prepared. For this failed salary man, all it took to get that fiery passion back was to save this butt <laughs> child from a crab that. monster in underwear. <sighs> that was a sentence. This man was Saitama, and he was going to be a superhero. And so he trained, pushing his body beyond its limits and shattering the boundaries. Was it 500 sit-ups, so 500 push-ups? Saitama's strength grew exponentially day by day, like with the goal of becoming <laughs> the greatest hero who ever Every lived. Day. And much to his horror, that's exactly what he got. All it took was one punch. Damn it! <laughs> that makes it so funny, though. He became though. too strong. He became the one, the only, the infamous Kate Baldy. <laughs> anyone who's cool knows him as One Punch Man. Is it he can't help but beat almost every opponent he's faced in exactly one punch? One friggin' punch. And this is a universe with some pretty whacked out monsters. Yeah, straight up. Like a giant who's over a quarter of a kilometer tall and can stomp city-sized craters into the earth. Or an esper who can effortlessly pull giant meteors from outer space. Or a monster king who shaved off a continent from the Earth's surface <laughs> and lifted it into the stratosphere. And Saitama's never even broken so much as a sweat fighting any of them. During their battle, that same monster king absorbed this huge chunk of the Earth's core and fired it at Saitama. Who blocked it by squirt gunning some lava? <laughs> the lava he was bathing in, naked. <laughs> and then he punched him. The bride. <laughs> Saitama's created after images just by hopping side to side, defeated a martial arts master with his butt, yep. and survived the inhospitable vacuum of space after being kicked all the way to the moon <laughs> and before jumping back to Earth in about 16 seconds. <laughs> That's 8% the speed of light. Oh, Seven like the time he blocked attacks from this alien dude who stated to move near light speed or punch so fast his fist starts to blue ship. You know, that thing that happens when you approach the speed of light? <laughs> Saitama utilizes his absurdly superhuman strength and speed with <sighs> techniques like his devastating... I mean, there's only one way this should end, punch. so I'm hoping and it goes that way. And if he wants to way. amp it up, the consecutive normal punches. Are you kidding me? Those are his attack names? What kind of self-respecting anime <laughs> protagonist is he? Plain and simple, he's a satire form. Instead of seeing his journey from the beginning and enjoying his struggle to the top, we join him when he's already there. Right. Basically, imagine if Goku went Super Saiyan in his fight against Jackie Chun. Kind of sucks all the drama out of it, doesn't it? And that's the point. Far from the power fantasy the genre is known for, Saitama's life became an existential nightmare. Without suitable conflict, the struggle that had heretofore defined him became meaningless. Right. His new reality was inescapably boring. <laughs> Which is really saying something when he can decimate mountains without even hitting them. Or shatter asteroids that rank a 9 on the Torino scale. For those not in the Torino, that's equal to 1 trillion tons of TNT. This guy's training must have been insane. That would be 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 <laughs> squats, and a 10-kilometer run. Oh, this is 100? I thought it was 500. And that's it. <laughs> You've got to be shitting me. It doesn't make sense because it's not allowed to make sense. And to be fair, though, to someone who isn't already a trained soldier or athlete, keeping that workout routine every day for years is pretty much impossible. While 100 push-ups and sit-ups are technically doable, especially if you space them out, doing 100 squats and then running half a marathon every single day yeah. would absolutely destroy your leg. <laughs> Put simply, effective workouts involve shredding muscle fibers at the micro level, then allowing them time to repair themselves right. more durable than before. This repair process requires hydration, consuming protein and carbohydrates, and lots of sleep. But Saitama's workout schedule doesn't give them time to repair, which means he was basically just ripping himself to shreds <laughs> over and over and over. After a few days, he shouldn't even have been able to move, but he just 
kept going. There might be an explanation. <laughs> Take the brilliant scientist Dr. Genus, whose half century of research into evolution Saitama erased in well, one punch. <laughs> According to Genus's hypothesis, Saitama's training broke his limiter. Basically, every living thing on Earth has a limit to their natural abilities. At some point, no matter how badass they are, they'll plateau. Hey. Wait a minute. Have I peaked? <laughs> I gotta go to the gym! Well, Saitama trained so hard, he literally <laughs> defied the laws of nature and reality. He just breaks the logic of his world. Yeah. He crushed the entire field of evolutionary biology in the palm of his hand. And while he has stated that his strength did eventually stop growing, it's pretty clear he's never gotten close to showing it off in full. Such right. as when he fought the godlike alien conqueror, Lord Boros, and finally broke out his serious punch. A blow where he punches. <laughs> A little harder <laughs> than normal. And reflected Boros' collapsing star roaring cannon. Now you see, that's an attack name. An energy blast that was going to blow up the friggin' planet. That's over 50 zettatons of TNT. Like a quadrillion of the world's strongest nukes going off at once. Despite his obvious and overwhelming power, <sighs> Saitama's accomplishments were never officially recognized. As if no right. one in their right minds could believe a psych ward Charlie Brown could save the world. <laughs> doesn't seem to mind. Almost as if being removed from anything resembling conflict gave him a perspective on how tropey and contrived his world is. Only Saitama's the only one in on the joke, because who cares about how far up their own ass a supervillain is when you can just chill at home with your buds and play video games? Maybe that was the real lesson all along. Not to value our lives based on our accomplishments, but on the time we spend living and enjoying life's simple pleasures. Mm. I'll leave that to Saitama, and I can't think of anything more pleasurable than punching so hard my name becomes <laughs> right on. my word for literally <laughs> unbeatable. The dude is the undisputed <laughs> king of broken anime characters, because until Saitama yeah. finds his equal, that was the he's point. gonna end all his fights in one punch! <laughs> one punch! The sailor man this is my hero. show Adventurer first sailor off i will say man. this oh, i love that episode like when sinbad the sailor goes the against popeye the sailor day. i think yeah and uh, have you ever wanted to know what angry cat sex sounds like he can sing I'm <laughs> the <sailor> man. <laughs> how exactly do you know <laughs> Popeye's origins are humble, oh born to the cruelly named Poop Deck Pappy. Popeye was, immediately upon birth, horrifically ugly. <laughs> so ugly, his father fled in embarrassment of his son <laughs> and never returned. So Popeye grew up with a chip on his shoulder and a pup in his eye. Especially after discovering his higher calling, beating the snot out of people. Don't worry, Popeye's fists are righteous, only spilling the snot of those who deserve it. Inspired by his adopted father, Whaler Joe, Popeye set out to put his combat prowess to the test and joined the Navy, becoming a true sailor man. It was there he learned the sweet science of boxing and do battle against World War II era racial stereotypes. I'm being non-specific. Not just for sensitivity, <laughs> but because there are so many examples. Uh. Originating in the era of rubber hose animation, Popeye's body is essentially made of, well, rubber. <laughs> able to stretch, twist, squish, and squash some anywhere weird he stuff. likes. Or rev up his arm for a punch that'll knock you around the planet. <laughs> Popeye's punches are fascinating, since they can disincorporate their targets into composite elements, like turning <laughs> anchors into fish hooks, an alligator into handbags, and several Native Americans, you know, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> the reason's pretty simple, Wiz. He's a cartoon. He can basically do whatever he wants. He can shoot fire from his corn cob pipe, pull a canyon closed, punch bolts of lightning out of the air, and even give the sun a black eye. Judging <laughs> by the distance the sun is from the earth, as well as the time it took for the high striker puck to reach oh, it, geez. the puck must have been moving at 500 times the speed of mm -hmm. light. In order to generate that force, Popeye must have swung his fist just as fast. I, I like how Hell, they do he's this. He's even shadow boxed so fast, he somehow occupied two places at once and hit himself. <laughs> so, uh, was he just born this way? Is being ugly the secret to pulling insane bullshit superpowers out of your ass? Because if so, you might want to get on that, buddy. Ha ha, no. 
The secret to Popeye's immense physical strength is simply the virtue of nutrition. <laughs> uh, I knew you'd find a way to make it lame. Specifically, Popeye has spent his <laughs> life consuming a miracle herb that has turned him from a mere sailor into a veritable god. Blue hair on his chest. Spinach. Propaganda straight from the bean counters at Big Vegetable. Yeah, that You'll never good. get me to eat my greens, damn you! <laughs> it's only animal flesh and green alcohol for me! <laughs> uh, <laughs> originated in Persia, Spinachia oleracea is a leafy green green nutrient and antioxidant rich vegetable that can help prevent cancer and reduce blood pressure and apparently imbue your biceps with the power of god <laughs> while a normal can of spinach <laughs> contains about 44 calories when used in popeye's world its effects are multiplied not only does it immediately increase popeye's already impressive strength and speed even further it makes him virtually impervious to harm <laughs> it lets him fly turn invisible shape shift his body into literally anything and even survive the universe game Getting turned off. That's right. This big whatever the hell that thing is is apparently God, and he turned off reality <laughs> in order to kill Popeye and his friends. Cause why not? Except guess what? Popeye was fine. Well, that's fine? just in the because comic, right? He eats his spinach. I wonder what its nutritional content is like. Well, let's find out with math. <laughs> no! <laughs> a single can of spinach in Popeye's world was wait, once wait, able wait. to grow a beanstalk so tall it reached into outer space all the way to a nearby solar system and shattered this stylized yellow star. By measuring the volume of this spinach stock and including the caloric density of regular spinach, we can calculate one single can of Popeye's spinach contains over 46 <laughs> octillion calories. That's over 700 what? octillion times greater than the total calories the average person will uh. consume over their entire life. Kay. That's over 46 million Yoda tons of TNT. Enough to destroy well, <laughs> a star. Or enough to punch your annoying neighbor so hard that when they land, they tilt the earth. <laughs> by measuring the angle of the planet after tilting, we can determine its axis is adjusted by about 13 degrees in less than a second. That's a speed of about 1.8 million meters per second. I wonder, is that enough to power a rocket ship so fast it travels backwards in time? Yeah, because that happens <laughs> I only know one type of herb that'll take you through time. <laughs> Whatever kind of spinach it is, it sure ain't normal. Not true. Popeye doesn't consume some special magical spinach. Any kind will do, even if That's it's given to him by the audience in the real world <laughs> watching his cartoon. He can summon cans to his side by whistling for them, praying to gods, painting them into reality, or just waving his hand. The dude has uh. literally been disintegrated into nothingness. Then his nothingness grabbed a spinach <laughs> out of nowhere and ate it nothing ate it his nothing and then he came back with his <laughs> he can even punch so hard he tears the film uh, strip he's being animated on this. or exit his cartoon to beat the shit out of his own <laughs> anime so papa has basically fought two different versions of god and whooped their asses you know He's a pretty tough <laughs> considering he's oh, a spinach eating Lovecraftian nightmare. But Robin he's Williams was perfect down for that for role. Scrap. So if you decide to antagonize him, be aware you're messing with one of Cartoon's all time heavyweight champions. Ugh. And for your own sake, eat your fing. <laughs> <laughs> when you put it all that way, then I guess if he wins, I kind of get it, but it's one punch. It's one punch. <sighs> Let's see how it goes. Aw, oh, man. This crap's always so expensive. Eh, no <laughs> oh, jeez. I can't stand no one bad-mouthing me spinach. <laughs> Put him up, yes, big palooka. <sighs> Whatever. Okay. I mean, the animation is actually pretty dope because it looks like it's around real stuff, but that's but it's all animated. Well, blow me down. You ain't got a scratch on yous. I know, right? Overwhelming strength is <laughs> know, right? so boring. <laughs> hmm, I can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> He's not dead, is he? Huh? Yep, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Comes back from death. 
<sighs> Perfect. <Okay. laughs> uh, a little bit more interesting now. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh wow, we changed. Okay. <laughs> I like the changes in the style of the animation. That's pretty dope. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Could you imagine if Popeye looked like that in the cartoons? <laughs> Spinach. <laughs> amazing! This is amazing! How did you get so strong? I eat me spinach. Another form of animation. Okay. Oh. Ah. Okay. We're back to this. <laughs> Can this be? My heart's beating so fast. <laughs> My muscles ache. I can feel them again. <laughs> oh, the sun. That's all I can stand, cause I can't stand <sighs> no more. I never thought it would happen. A serious fight. I found it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, he's just so happy. Thank you, weird spinach mascot. <laughs> What? <laughs> what? <laughs> he took a big gamble, but now he is. He pushed him into scrambled eggs. Well, over hard eggs and an actual egg. Oh, well, I guess you could say that fight was wow. over easy. Wait, except isn't Saitama's whole gag that he can't lose? It is, but it's more nuanced than that. Despite breaking his limiter, Saitama's strength isn't limitless. He's said so himself. Breaking his limiter meant his potential strength was likely infinite, but there's nothing left in his world powerful enough to push him to get stronger, like a bodybuilder stuck with five pound dumbbells. He also doesn't possess some magical ability to kill someone in one punch regardless of effort. Powerful adversaries like Boros and Garo have survived his blows repeatedly, I'll be uh, brief. and briefly, and he's yeah. never met anyone quite like Popeye the Sailor Man. According to the mangaka, One Punch Man's gag is that Saitama is an anime protagonist at the end of his series, slapped in at the beginning of his series, where he's <laughs> too strong to have a challenge. So, if we know Saitama's strength does have a limit, what is it? We know he can deflect Boros' planet-destroying right. blast, but he was clearly super casual about it. He may have called it his serious punch, but that's the joke. He's only <laughs> now getting kind of serious. In order to get as generous a number as possible, let's assume Saitama was exerting the least amount of effort he could to throw that punch. Since mm -hmm. he's still technically a human, we can assume the ratio between the least amount of effort possible and the most is 
relatively consistent with other humans. Let's just say he burned the equivalent of only one calorie relative to the strongest punch ever recorded, which was over 1,000 joules. Mm. For reference, the average person burns about one calorie a minute doing absolutely nothing. So this is assuming Saitama is literally as casual as physically <laughs> possible. Then it make his strongest punch about 200 times greater than his weakest. Using Boros's energy blast as a base, Saitama's theoretical strongest punch would be over 11 Yoda tons of TNT. That's absolutely insane. Enough to annihilate Uranus four times over. Jeez. Well, that's impressive, but that's still far less than Popeye's star busting power, which was millions of times greater. <laughs> sure, this is only an estimate. We don't know Saitama's full. You're saying that because exactly. the spinach is the inside is, him when he eats it? Whatever it may be, and so he takes it on can be measured. the power right, of the but spinach. Trying to compare them with just numbers isn't the whole story. While Saitama can break his world, fairly easily, it's still a semi-realistic world that generally obeys the laws of physics. Popeye in his world, on the other hand, right. can't really be measured at all. The dudes occupied two places at the same time, ripped the film strip he's animated on, and knocked out the guy drawing him. Can't do math to figure that out. <laughs> Popeye is just on a whole other level of bullshit. Even if Saitama was strong enough to kill Popeye in one punch, Popeye has survived being fully disintegrated, only to recover good as new. Help, God turned off all of reality, and Popeye just ignored it. And on the flip side, there was nothing stopping Popeye from just turning Saitama into a bunch of eggs, <laughs> which he can do without spinach. So even if Popeye was weaker, he'd still have a way to finish the job in one punch. Saitama was easily one of the strongest combatants we've ever seen, but pure strength was no match for Popeye's insane power, survivability, and Jumped plain off old cartoon the sun. shenanigans. <laughs> if you thought nothing could match the one punch man, now you know Popeye's spinach can. The winner is Popeye. <laughs> do I fully accept the outcome of this death battle? No, I do not. But the way that they set it up and positioned it, it makes sense. I mean, like, because Saitama is human and he's a joke of a character in and of itself. Uh, that kind of changes things. Where Popeye, he's human, but he is straight up a cartoon character that can do anything. Uh, and there's some things in there I never knew about. Obviously, a lot of stuff in the comics. I never read Popeye comics. I just watched the cartoons. When again, Sinbad, uh, I think it's Sinbad meets Popeye or Popeye meets Sinbad the Sailor Man, something like that. That's one of my favorite episodes of Popeye ever. And um, I love it. But yes, he's able to do some crazy stuff. And so it makes sense. It does kind of make sense how this turned out because of how they positioned it and they do the science behind it where they can, stuff like that. I like how they put these together. Don't get me wrong, I love that. But I feel like One Punch Man still would have won. Uh, <laughs> but the fact that Popeye has survived the end of the world, he survived being disintegrated, like all these things, it does make sense. I don't fully agree with it, but it does make sense overall in this type of video why he would win. All right, so I, I guess it's I guess it's kind of all right. Let me know your thoughts though. Where are you on the verdict of Popeye winning versus Saitama or One Punch Man. Uh, let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it a little bit. Thanks for watching, members, subscribers, watchers, however you support, it's really amazing. I appreciate that we can watch and laugh and enjoy these videos together. So thank you so much for coming by. To my Hyper Crew members, verbal shout out for you guys. Brian Tidwell, Steve-O, Slepnir, Dash Milner, K6013, Giro15000, Daniel Lopez, Kratos, Richie Chester, Arnon Steelpelt, and Jackie Pie. Thanks so much for supporting with that top tier crew. That's all I got on this one. I'll see you in the comments as always, and I will see you on the next video. Have a great rest of your day.